Dining can be experienced in an astonishing variety of ways, from dizzying heights to submarine depths. Whether it's the crunch of a bug salad, ninja waiters with exploding food, the mad science of molecular gastronomy, or getting locked up in a culinary nuthouse, it's time to grab a fork and savor Uber Guide's countdown of the world's most unusual restaurants. We begin our countdown in the third largest metropolis in America. Chicago has plenty of diners to choose from, but only one can claim to be on Uber Guide's unusual restaurants list. Moto, a site of gastronomic research and experimentation. Moto is famous for serving up some of the weirdest dishes ever with a scientific twist. This is the place to go when you really feel like experimenting. There's a whole generation of chefs in America who follow the Spanish chef Ferran Adria and his philosophy of molecular gastronomy, which is really treating cooking and food as if it were a chemistry project. And at Modo, it's always an adventure. All right, what you have here is a sphere filled with a liquid graham cracker center with a brulee marshmallow, just like you would at your campfire, sir. A little bit of a graham cracker praline, and then a little special something from the chef, a cigarette. Totally edible, a little bit of smoke. Just don't eat the ashtray, enjoy. Just like chocolate. The uh, smoke on there was, uh, tasted just like smoke. Sir, just what you always wanted for dinner is roadkill. Uh, I honestly had no idea what to think. I've never been out to dinner before where they've said, hey, here's some roadkill for you. I mean, I've never seen something like this end up on my plate before. You get that crunchy sensation, it's just, it just really goes well with the whole uh, roadkill theme. Who's the brains behind all this wild food? Homero Cantu, a chef who can only be properly described as an eccentric culinary genius. The son of an engineer, Cantu's approach is pushing the boundaries of what can be put in one's mouth. The experience behind Moto is one of interactive creativity. There's a little bit of science involved, but ultimately I like to describe this as uh, Bozo the Clown meets Willy Wonka's Funhouse. We just think outside of the box to produce food in different, more energy efficient ways. Of utmost importance to Cantu is where the raw ingredients come from. This is organic by legal definition, but by ethical definition, it doesn't even come close. You can't let the lawyers tell you what's organic. You just gotta know, does it come out of the ground? Okay, great, that's organic. We like to support our local farmers here, and when they come in, we gotta give them a proper greeting. So uh, everybody, let's give them a proper greeting. Homegrown! Yeah! We only buy American because we don't want to support the commies over in China. These are real eggs, okay? This is right out of the uh, the chicken's butt, okay? They're still kind of wiggling in there. If you give them enough time, they'll hatch. Once in the hands of these magicians, the ingredients quickly become masterpieces. How do they do it? Any way that comes to mind. The techniques that we use here are things like uh, welders, lasers, liquid nitrogen, um, industrial processes. Sometimes instead of searing something, we'll take a bloat, like a, a flamethrower, um, and we'll just obliterate it. So we're just gonna go ahead and fire it up. See what I'm saying? It's all right there, baby! Or you could just fire it up on the reel, okay? The people that are here um, are just, like, they're crazy. I accidentally put some cookies in the blender. I didn't know they were supposed to be used tonight, but I made it into like a liquid. So it's a liquid that tastes like uh, like cookies, basically. So I'm just using this to dip into nitrogen and then into that cookie liquid. So what happens is we make a shell of an ice cream cone from ice cream cones, and the ice cream cone is actually an ice cream cone. Whoa. We try and come up with the weirdest sounding dish as, as possible, and then, uh, and then we try and make it and sometimes, usually it doesn't work, but sometimes they do work. This one kind of works. The ideas for all these crazy dishes come from some serious R&D sessions. Everybody here plays a role in the creation of new ideas. Every Tuesday, we get together 
uh, talk for maybe an hour or three about new ideas. Um, and so everybody sort of has a, a hand in what happens here. It's a true team effort. This candy ash is actually a mixture of like black sesame seed, a little bit of caramelized sugar. Um, there's like some, uh, some toasted almond in there as well. We're gonna put some of that candy ash in the ash tray. And then we take a vanilla flavored water and we put that water in a smoker and smoke it so it has kind of like a smoky vanilla kind of flavor. We're gonna glue this onto the end of the cigarette so it looks like there's smoke coming out of the cigarette that's being smoked. Like. But when you tell a kid, you know, hey, imagine a platypus playing the piano, they can do that pretty easily. If you tell an adult that, they're gonna look at you like you're nuts. Um, so when kids see this stuff, it all makes sense. They're the ones that we're after. I knew to expect the unexpected, and that was about it. And I think that they've delivered. An undeniably crazy place, serving food that can only be properly described as postmodern. Modo is simply a phenomenon. When you go to an opera, you probably fall asleep in the middle of it. You're not going to fall asleep here. You're going to remember every course for the next 10 years. We're smart enough to pay attention to what people like, what people don't like, and also what people want. And right now, at least for the last few years, and hopefully for the next few, um, what they want is some crazy stuff. Chicago's Moto, Uber Guide's 10th pick on our countdown of unusual restaurants. We now journey to the sunny shores of Santa Monica, an affluent Los Angeles suburb brimming with iconic sights and eclectic charms. Here, and in neighboring Venice Beach, the boardwalk bustles with eccentric characters. It's a place where health and fitness are pursued with a passion, and it's home to a most unusual restaurant and some larger-than-life personalities, Giuliano's Raw. Californians are known all over the world as kind of being a little offbeat and crazy. Well, this is one of those things that helps solidify that notion. <laughs> I wanted to start this restaurant to give people a way to eat without having to wind up in a hospital. You know, because that's really what happens to you when you eat any other food except for raw, organic, vegan food. I have met people who use raw to cure cancer. At the age of 19, after growing up in his father's meat-heavy Italian restaurant, Giuliano gave up all animal products. Meat, six hours out of the refrigerator, it'll probably kill you. Three days in the refrigerator, it'll probably kill you. You don't cook it long enough, it'll probably kill you. One of the founders of this raw movement, Giuliano has become a force to be reckoned with. Any cooked food, it becomes immediately poisonous to the body. This is totally true. Every uh, living creature on the planet, plant, animal, insect, and microscopic organism are raw fooders. Grandma zebra is running across a continent swimming across crocodile-infested rivers and outrunning young male lions. You know, grandma human is nowhere near in that kind of shape. Within a week or two after you start raw, you get up all like over-the-counter medications. You never have headaches anymore. You won't find any processed food at raw. This is actually what we use. Fruits, roots, leaves, nuts, seeds, and mushrooms. And that's it. Giuliano calls his techniques uncooking. We bake a bread on a rock in the sun for three days. That's how we make our bread. We leave the enzymes and minerals in the food. So when you heat something over 120, it, it kills all the enzymes, making it harder to digest and making it not as healthy. There's a pretty beautiful sample plate. It's pumpkin tortellini that's pumpkin thinly sliced with pine nut cheese, little guacamole, pizza, a really incredible monster wrap sushi, a seaweed salad, most amazing one in the planet, a salad with ranch, and these are watermelon daikon raviolis. These are really amazing. These are just like these little, I don't know, these little guys, and then falafel balls. Just excellent, made from, uh, not from chickpeas though, made from cauliflower macadamia. Raw has attracted a health conscious crowd, including some well-known celebrities. He's got this following, he's really a cool guy. Demi Moore, Woody Harrelson, Robin Williams. They're doing something right. I mean, there's definitely something to this. They all look great. Raw is also a magnet for those looking for a healthy food alternative with an eccentric flair. All those little problems, those little slings and arrows that I've had, like, you know, your stomach feels like it's not working up to speed. For me, when I eat sort of at least 50 to 60% raw, all that stuff washes away. I met several people that had brain damage and they did raw 
and they're all walking around. If you eat anything else, you're really hurting the planet and you're really hurting yourself. Can raw food cure every disease known to man? Can it solve our environmental problems and encourage world peace? It's delicious. Giuliano's Raw is one of those you either love it or you hate at restaurants. To find out for yourself, check out Giuliano's Raw, number nine on our Uber list. The countdown continues after the break at a completely automated eatery. And later, a restaurant that puts you face to face with creatures from the deep. Uber Guide is counting down the planet's most unusual restaurants. Now, for a completely different approach to table service. Is it really possible to mechanize an entire restaurant? Leave it to the Germans to come up with Spoggers, an uber cool diner that comes in at number eight on our Uber countdown. Germany has long been known for its engineering acumen, but this famous ability takes a yummy turn in Nuremberg, a city with a long industrial tradition. At Spoggers, there are no servers to take your order or deliver your food. In fact, you'll be hard pressed to find any employees outside of the kitchen. Everything is completely automated. When you walk in the door, you're greeted by the only restaurant employee you'll see throughout your experience. Hello, welcome to Spuggers, the most exceptional restaurant in the world. First of all, may I give you a restaurant card? This is a chip card with an RFID chip. And to place your booking, you go to your dining table where you will find a touch screen. And there you'll have an illustrated menu and you just choose from a variety of delicious region specialities. After your order arrives up in the kitchen, it's prepared by chefs who only use ingredients that can handle the high stresses of track delivery. It's all organic at Spoggers. The delivery system isn't the only important aspect here. We also place a very high emphasis on the food itself. We have very high quality, premium food, including many organic products. And what comes up must come down. You place your order with this restaurant card and the moment you place it with the restaurant card, it appears up in the kitchen. And there, the chefs prepare each dish freshly and they will send it down in little devices to the right dining tables where the order was originally placed. And it will find the right customer with the help of a color code. The color corresponds to the color of the seat of the customer. So you not only see your meals coming down, you also see your drinks and everything is coming down in devices on those tracks. So this is the most unusual way you would get your food anywhere in a restaurant in the world. The customers really get a kick out of Spoggers. Let's face it, not many restaurants can charm the patrons while offering no service. In Deutschland liebt man Technik. Germans love technical devices, so they just love it here. But we also have reservations from people all over the world, including Canada. When the food and drinks just float down to your table, guests just love it. And I like the fact that um, the restaurant extends to the outside, so with the lovely weather at the moment, it's really nice. The best bit of this experience was when the first drink came down the roller coaster. It was just like, we were all talking and then all of a sudden it was just like, oh my God, look at it, it's amazing. And oh, it was really fun to watch. And we'll second that. Because gravity works 24 seven and because you don't have to leave a tip, Spoggers is number eight on our Uber Weird Diner Countdown. We now zip to the opposite side of the planet to check out the quirky and cool in beautiful Mexico. Located on the Riviera Maya, the city of Playa del Carmen is a hot international destination for the Uber tourist. Teeming with activity, street markets, beaches, and overall atmosphere means this is a place not to be missed. And bring plenty of pesos. Maybe a traditional Mayan mask will find its way into your shopping bag. But what makes this mini metropolis so sizzling isn't what you'll find above ground. 
it's what lies beneath. The entire area is riddled with caves, created thousands of years ago in the last ice age. But only one of these caverns houses an uber exclusive, a louche restaurant. The allure of Alush begins with its exotic name. De acuerdo a los antiguos mayas, los cenotes son moradas. According to the ancient Mayans, these caves were the home to the Alush. To the ancient people, the Alush were goblins, just like mythical dwarves. To appease the magical creatures believed to be inside the caves, the Mayans sacrificed female virgins. Luckily, the owners of Alush didn't have to go to that extreme to be granted the privilege of using the grotto but they did ask the goblins for permission. So far, the answer seems to be yes. Alush features a dining area, an incredible bar, and plenty of stalactites and stalagmites. Alush is like nowhere you've ever been because it's in a cave and there's all these little places that you can go and they have Mayan art on the wall. And then there's tiny little cozy dining rooms and it's all very nicely lit. The subterranean surroundings add extra kick to the menu here. With prices that can easily hit $500 per person, make sure you bring a platinum credit card. The food is very special. We had a flambe, crepes flambe, and they put all sorts of liquor on top of it and it went on fire and it was very sweet with ice cream. It was very good. Plus, once you've dined on your cavernous culinary selections, you can spend time tipping back a few at the bar. The lighting is perfect. They've lit all the stalactites and the stalagmites perfectly. This is very thoughtful, little path through the underground. Or just sway to some traditional tunes on the dance floor. Live musicians make this an uber awesome swing fest. In a tourist mecca like Playa del Carmen, Alush attracts patrons from the far corners of the earth. Our visitors are from a wide range of nationalities. We have a very cosmopolitan place here where people from all over the world come to join us. I loved it. I really loved Alush. It made me feel like a little kid, you know, when you're a little kid and you want to run through caves and have a whole other world. It was like a completely other world. And because nothing goes to the depths that Alush will to satisfy your food cravings, it repels up at number seven. Coming up next. Lovely crunchy locusts. A meal you'll never forget. Yeah. Uber Guide is counting down the most unusual restaurants, and we're hitting some pretty weird ones. Now to the warmest ocean in the world for the next spot on the menu. In the middle of the sparkling waters of the Indian Ocean sits a tropical paradise with few equals anywhere else on the planet. The Maldives consist of over 1,000 islands, all breathtakingly beautiful. In such a gorgeous place, it's not surprising to find a few nice eateries. But what about the out of the ordinary? Yes, the Maldives is home to Itha, an uber undersea culinary experience unlike anything else and Uber Guide's number six pick for most unusual restaurant. Itha is one of seven restaurants at the Conrad Maldives Rangali Island Resort. Located in the far western ring of this isolated island kingdom, the posh factor here is simply unsurpassed. It has twice been voted best hotel in the world. We have two islands, one resort, seven restaurant concepts, three bars, and two spas. Ita restaurant is definitely the highlight. Many, many other things to offer for activities such as scuba diving, snorkeling, fishing trips, nice sailing trips. People never run out of things to do. Itha is a superb bit of engineering magic. Weighing 175 tons with 85 tons of sand ballast loaded in its belly, the restaurant sits 16 feet below the surface and offers 180 degrees of super duper sea views. The, the size of the restaurant allows 12 to 14 guests. The location was selected carefully for logistic reasons, to have a close by kitchen, but at the same time offer our guests a unique experience. 
Here, you inhabit a world completely foreign to humans. You can experience wildlife such as mantas and sharks, stingrays, and all kinds of big fish such as parrotfish, sometimes tuna, and quite often sea turtles too. How many people have had the opportunity to feast on five-star cuisine at the bottom of the ocean? Only those who've stepped foot in Itha. The very unique and special thing in Ita, obviously, is the big wow factor when you enter this very stylish restaurant. It offers very contemporary but stylish high-end quality furniture with the undersea world coming to your table. If you're lucky, maybe you'll spot a mermaid floating lazily on the other side of the glass, under the sea. The food is very unique, Maldivian contemporary with a slight Western fusion. Most of the dishes are seafood prepared with local spices. The sommelier has a selection of fine wines from very high-end vineyards. We carry about 10,000 types of wines. A, new level. a tip top menu and tip top eye candy. This is Itha in a clamshell. It's a very educational culinary experience where the food is important, but surrounding this creating just as important sort of environment for the diners throughout the night. And because no other restaurant on earth or under the sea can boast such an amazing gastronomic and visual display, Itha is number six on Uber Guide's unusual restaurant countdown. Jolly old England a nation that's traded empire for a little Cosmo flair. One of the world's great multicultural meccas, in London, you're just as likely to see a mosque as a church. The tastiest aspect of this cultural explosion? The cuisine has gone global. And the best place to grab a bite of this international fare is undoubtedly Archipelago. Located in London's Fitzrovia neighborhood, Archipelago fits in perfectly with the bohemian attitude prevalent here. Nothing is off limits on this menu. The more unusual things we do here are the crocodile, uh, lubbug salad, which is locust and crickets, and gnu, zebra, kangaroo, lots of unusual meats. Self-styled as London's portal to world cuisine, your first impression upon walking in Archipelago's door sets the table for an interesting experience sort of carries you straight through into the restaurant and sort of have a good look around and see what this place is. So we've got things from Africa, there's things from Indonesia, there's um, Thai objects in there as well. So it's a little bit of everything just to bring in that whole thing that it's not from one set place. Even the restrooms can't avoid this eclectic art display. We've got one which is very, very green and everything's crowding in on you. The ladies' bathroom, it's the sort of greys and the blues, but like upstairs, a lot of things everywhere, knickknacks hanging from the ceiling. And if you want what's on the wall, just name your price. If it's not nailed down to the wall, then it's all for sale. So we get customers that come in, sort of take a liking to an object and say how much and we sell it, and then obviously we'd replace that with something else. As strangely fascinating as the decor may be, the food definitely hits a 10 on the weirdo meter. I generally tend to call my food global fusion, which means I take food from all over the world and put it together. So a good example is the crocodile where the crocodile comes in Zimbabwe, marinated in a Thai curry sauce, wrapped in Greek vine leaves and served with a Chinese sweet and sour sauce. Uh, I've got four countries in one dish. It takes a lot of experimentation to come up with a recipe that may sound off the wall, but tastes great. Some people call me imaginative, others would just say mad. I tend to play a lot. I just take things, throw them together and see how they come out. To be honest, for every successful recipe I get, I normally have half a dozen that were completely inedible for humans. Bugs, lovely crunchy locusts, and crickets. In the years I've been here, there's been hundreds of things like, I'm just gonna try this, throw everything together, eat it. I wouldn't give that to my dog. But the recipes that do work definitely have an exotic taste that can't be found anywhere else. This is the wildebeest, which is one of the most tenderest, flavorous red meats there is. It's marvelous. This is probably my favorite meat off the menu. Uh, we coat it in peanuts and then thinly slice. Most of these exotic meats, they're very, very low in fat. 
Do customers dig this stuff? The proof is in the pudding here. It looks like um, a restaurant or a menu off a game reserve, so it's quite interesting to try the different types of meats. The bigger <coughs> ones are locust, and then you go the, the wee locust. ones. These are the locusts, and then there's a wee one here. There's it. They're crickets. It's nice. Is it? Honestly, I want to say it. It's really nice. I promise. Go on. Go on. Go on. Okay, okay, cut the head off for <laughs> me. It's gross, isn't it? <laughs> Chew. It's quite nice, isn't it? If you get past what it is, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? It's really nice uh, flavours. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are scared of it before they come, but once they try it, it's food at the end of the day. And we do do unusual things, not trying to shock, uh, just trying to broaden people's horizons a bit. Archipelago's food appeals to an exotic taste. One might say it's fit for a king, or at least a prince or two. Had the princes in a couple of times, Prince William and Prince Harry. But you don't need any royal blood to be taken seriously here. Just a curiosity that knows no bounds. This is my favorite restaurant in London, and I always bring my friends here when they come to visit, especially from the US. London's Archipelago, a walk on the wild side of food, and a natural on our uber strange diner list. Does food taste better when you can't see it? You'll find out next on Uber Guide's countdown of the world's most unusual restaurants. The hunt for the world's most unusual restaurants is Uber Guide's mission. Now for the toughest one to visualize on our countdown. Greater Los Angeles is a place of extraordinary sights. Home to the Academy Awards, Grumman's Chinese Theater, and the iconic images of the Walk of Fame, the atmosphere can be chaotic at times, as visitors mingle with fans living out their superhero fantasies in public. But LA also offers up a bizarre alternative for superheroes who value privacy above everything else. Opaque, a restaurant where cloaking devices are mandatory. I always say if you don't want to be seen with your date, take them to Opaque, because no one's going to see them, not even you. Uber Guide's number four pick in our exhaustive search of the world's most unusual restaurants, Opaque is an eatery where you dine in complete darkness while being served by legally blind waiters. Well, I've been blind for uh, four years now. I can see light, but I cannot define what's in the light. All of our servers are visually impaired, and uh, we train them here because most of them didn't have any um, experience uh, working in a restaurant. The opaque experience starts the second you walk in the door. You make your tasty selections in the lobby using a unique menu. This is so cool. Keep it a secret, and then you can't. Oh, and then it explains all of it to yeah. It's our two-year anniversary, so we thought, why not just do something completely original and fun and not like the same boring dinner? Just the concept sounds so yeah. amazing. This is Michael. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Michael's going to be your How server you? and guest. Once you've made the culinary choices sure to massage your senses, it's time to enter the realm of darkness. And there's only one safe way to do it. Just call Michael out loud, and he'll come find you and guide you up. Okay. Thank you. So <laughs> After being led through the gauntlet, while completely relying on the person in front of you, it's time to sit down, relax, and take in the surroundings. Of course, night vision isn't an item on the menu. I don't see anything. How are we going to get... the whole experience of it. You're supposed to find it. Well, I'm going to like spoil everything. Okay. I can't even cut my foot. I don't even... It's kind of trippy when you first get in there, and then once you get used to the darkness, your other senses take over. I don't think that I've ever actually, like, full on heard another conversation in the restaurant, but, like, now I'm actually, like, I know, now you actually understand to other ears. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Some people come in and they mistake the rose petals for salad and <laughs> try to take off their shirt try to touch their loved one on the knees, you know. But, you know, mom's the word. We won't reveal all the secrets that go on in the dark. The food is prepared by chefs who can see what they're doing. OK, you got two Mediterraneans on top and two bottle of lettuce in the middle. OK, great. Next, it's delivered to assistants who sort the meals for the blind waiters. 
From there, it's all up to the amazing sightless talents of your server to safely bring the chow to your table. A lot of times people just ask, like, how do you eat? And it's like, well, you eat however you want to eat. If you want to use the utensils, they're over there for you. If you want to use your hands, you're more than welcome to. Um, we have quite a lot of reports of um, vegetables up the nose. Good. It's really good. Ew, ew. What, babe? I've had a full on tomato. Me does not like tomatoes, and his salad is full of tomatoes, so that was a surprise. Yeah, like... Okay, I'm gonna eat with my hands. Don't eat with your hands. It's just faster and more efficient. <laughs> Once you've finished eating and decide it's time to re enter the world of sight, be ready to not believe your eyes. Yes, it's light. It was apparently created on the first day. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my god. My eyes hurt. Did yours hurt? Yeah, my eyes hurt. It's like a surge of just light and like your back and then it takes a while to get your yeah, to adjust back to normal. Sometimes people have a little bit of anxiety, but mostly I'd say 95% of people have a really, really great time. Life changing almost. You go in there, you hear things about it, you read the little signs outside, but you're like, oh, okay, well let's see what this is about. And you get in there and it's just like, wow, this is what people were talking about. It's amazing. It just makes you think that life is not just what you see. It's a lesson in awareness and a really cool experience in restaurants. The dark memories of Opaque will be with you for a lifetime. And that's why the diner is number four on our super list. The unofficial capital of the world, New York City is home to a unique blend of global cultures. But don't let this facade of towering skyscrapers and bustling streets fool you. New York is also home to the world's most dangerous dining establishment, Ninja, number three on Uber Guide's countdown of the world's most unusual restaurants. Known for their stealth tactics and unorthodox art of warfare, Ninja Warriors are Japan's contribution to the world of espionage and subterfuge. New York's Ninja Restaurant embodies the character of these mysterious dark nights to perfection. Once you open the door, you plunge yourself into the samurai era in Japan, 500 years ago. You will quickly be shifted from American culture to Japanese culture. We want our customers to experience that change. Located in Tribeca, New York's hottest neighborhood, Ninja took two years and three and a half million dollars to build. We mainly focus on Ninja houses and clothes. Ninja houses have torches, walls with rocks piled up, and special windows that allow the light in. Be on your guard when you walk into this place, or dinner might come at too steep a cost. Hey! Welcome to Ninja. My name is Kevin San. I'll be taking you to your table tonight. The moment you step into the restaurant, you're in the Ninja world. Once you get off the elevator, you're surrounded by darkness, and ninjas begin appearing out of nowhere. You can choose the safe shortcut to your table, or the dangerous secret ninja passageway. There are special tricks that will definitely surprise you. Despite the trip you must take through the Valley of the Shadow of Death, the food here is well worth the risk. Ninja dishes are full of surprises. For instance, there's one dish where a sword is pulled out of a grapefruit and smoke rises up out of it. All of the dishes are exquisite and unique to Ninja New York Restaurant. The staff's abilities in combat are only rivaled by their skill in the kitchen. They definitely have some unique dishes here. If you guys look right now, the clam is actually sleeping. I need to wake this clam right up for you. With a little bit of heat, you'll see these clams wake right up in front of your eyes. And then there's the bonfire. That butter is actually melting. It's gonna mix in with the sherry vinegar sauce and heat up and marinate your lamb right at the same time. And the dessert shows no battle scars. Some dessert for the table. One of our popular ones here at Ninja, 
This here we call bonsai. It's a tiramisu dessert. That's not dirt, obviously. That's tiramisu. Some puff pastry and candy sugar form the leaves. At 6,000 square feet, the dining room recreates the two 18th century Japanese villas that were the birthplace of the ninja legend. And once dinner is over, get ready for a little magic. So the first time toss, what's the card you're merely thinking of? Jack of Spain. Oh, what cards is that? Good job. <laughs> My name's Stuart. You guys have a lovely night. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. much for coming to Ninja. Appreciate it. Cheers. It's really cool. It's different. It's different than any other place in the city, so. It's totally, totally unique. It's an experience so. from the time that you enter the place so I guess you exit. It's an experience. Definitely a diner where keeping your wits about you is a must if you're to survive. Ninja has the heart of a warrior and a cooking acumen to match, which is why it's number three on Uber Guide's unusual restaurant countdown. Next, a journey to the stratosphere of gastronomic delight. Uber Guide is counting down the world's most unusual restaurants. Now we reach for the sky, forks in hand. Belgium is a small nation with a rather tall pedigree. This country of hard-working beer connoisseurs has come up with one of the coolest and highest eateries the world has ever seen. The number two most unusual restaurant on Uber Guide's countdown, Dinner in the Sky. I think this is one of those lifetime events that you shouldn't miss. And for $28,000, you and your friends can have dinner in the sky. So what makes Dinner in the Sky one of the most unusual restaurants in the world? Here it is! Oh, this feels fantastic! I always wanted to be a bird. But what makes Dinner in the Sky a true global phenomenon is that it can be taken on the road. All you need is a crane and a bit of space, both vertical and horizontal. Franchises have now sprouted up all over the world with this one reaching for the heavens above Canada's largest city, Toronto. It can be over a, a fall, it can be nearby a beach for a fireworks uh, festival, or it can be downtown, like today, in the middle of a city. Only 22 people can access the platform. So see and being seen are part of the experience. The restaurant platform is built on an assembly line that would make Boeing proud. It's all about space age materials and uber safety for the ultimate high altitude meal. It's built under the most demanding standards in the world, the German TUV. The way it's arranged, it's a little like a catering in a plane and we are doing the main cooking on board. The seating arrangements are based on some engineering calculations, so we, as long as we are balancing the weight on the table, it's very, very stable. People are strapped, there's three belts. It's like a F1 or a race car driver, you're really stuck in your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, our guests at table number 16 are buckled in and making their way up for their dinner in the sky experience. Once you're buckled in, the real culinary adventure starts. These courtside seats quickly become nosebleeds. People, for the first 15 minutes, are grabbing the counter to just get under and look under them and get familiarized with height. But after a glass of champagne, people are there, relaxed, and they are enjoying their meal. They have a tomato jelly with a yellow tomato water, and they have a pavé of portobello mushrooms. Oh, it's wonderful. Lots of um, exotic flavors that I haven't tried before. Oh, the second course is fabulous. My goodness, it's just full of flavor and robust and rich. And what about when nature calls? Is there a restroom in the sky, too? Ask the maitre d. You tell them you have to go to the restroom. They lower the crane. It's just not as discreet as in a regular restaurant. The thrill of literally being on top of the world while enjoying a gourmet meal fit for royalty definitely sets this place apart. 
people are experiencing um, this, uh, this fabulous uh, once in a lifetime bucket list experience. Not scary at all, beautiful scenery, you see the city from a different perspective, the food was amazing. And, and every now and then you get to look down and see your feet hovering, hovering above the red carpet, that was, that was pretty neat. A restaurant that can be launched into the horizon above any city, Dinner in the Sky is truly a global phenomenon. And the views over Brussels or over Budapest or South Africa, if you can imagine what your views would be like, it's, it's definitely a treat. For taking patrons to the edge of heaven and back, Dinner in the Sky comes in at number two on our Uber Weird Eatery Countdown. Next, it doesn't get any weirder than this. Uber Guide reveals the most unusual restaurant. You won't want to miss it. Uber Guide's countdown of the most unusual restaurants is an Uber extravaganza. From heights, depths, caverns, and crazies, to ninjas, crocs, darkness, and automated service, it's all here, except number one. For our final extraordinary destination, we visit Japan, a nation that often poses cultural hurdles to Western consciousness. In Tokyo, it's easy to get lost in translation, as the youth dress up in the spirit of their favorite pop culture icons, a practice called cosplay. Another strange pastime seemingly enjoyed by millions of Japanese is to scare oneself silly. One of the country's leading theme parks, Fuji-Q Highland features the world's largest haunted house with an abandoned hospital theme. Some attribute this morbid fascination to the ancient myths of Namahage, mountain demons who come down to villages once a year to frighten lazy children. The terrified visitors explore the deserted sick house with flashlights until they're chased out by a madman. This addiction to terror isn't limited to theme parks. The busy Shibuya district is Tokyo's teen mecca, and it's the place where you'll find Uber Guide's number one most unusual restaurant in the world, Alcatraz ER. This is where Japan's booming manga culture goes absolutely mental. Idea of this. We came up with the idea for the restaurant after seeing the Hollywood movie, The Rock, starring Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. But the prison didn't seem enough, so we thought about fusing it with a hospital and put these ideas together in the theme of a mental hospital. That seemed like an interesting idea. At this place, it's Halloween every night. The Alcatraz ER staff members act as nurses, doctors, and surgeons. And for those really needing to be scared out of their wits, there's an escaped lunatic on the loose. When guests first arrive, they become the patients. So they get a vaccination shot because there's so many germs in a hospital like this. The disinfection procedures are a little out of the ordinary. We try to play with the patient-doctor relationship among the staff and the customers. Each room in the restaurant has a different look and name. There's a surgery room and an intensive care unit. The kitchen is called the morgue, for obvious reasons. And what of the food, you ask? We have some interesting dishes here, and we try to promote the healthy eating you would find in a hospital. French fries are called nurse's snack. We also have a dish called brain dissection, which is served in a real dissection tray. Perhaps you'd prefer the flambe chicken, crowned by its own feet, or the intestine-looking sausage. Medical-style cocktails are imaginatively administered in test tubes, feeding cups, and baby bottles. They have names like influenza and acute mental stabilizer. Some special drinks come presented in a severed head. As a medical student, I've seen some of these instruments and know what they're used for, and think to myself, oh, do I really want to use them? If you want to go to the restroom, it's announced to everyone in the restaurant. Throughout the evening, the lights go out, the sirens come on, and the madman is loose again, terrorizing the patients. But a gun-toting nurse keeps it all under control in her nonchalant, kiss-kiss, bang-bang kind of style. When you come with one or two people, it can be quite scary. But if a whole group of people come, it's not that bad. 
Namahage or not, cosplay or nay, these ghoulish jailers, macabre medics, and patient customers are definitely out to yank each other's chains. Now say arigato and sayonara to Alcatraz ER, Uber Guide's number one Uber unusual restaurant. If you have an appetite for the bizarre, the world is filled with strange new tastes. Go wild for the wildebeest, or satisfy your craving for edible cigarettes. Dine at the highest heights or the deepest depths. Your cuisine might save the planet or drive you to madness, but you'll savor every tasty bite on Uber Guide's countdown of the world's most unusual restaurants. <laughs>